um, congratulate you for uh, having this very important academic meeting. I would like also to uh, thank uh, the committee, um, Pak Hakim, as the uh, head of the team, uh, Bu Rayu, Bu Ririn, Bu Esti, Bu Yuri, yeah, for running this uh, first uh, program of best practice uh, 2022. Um, and I thank Dr. Ingurah Agung Wijaya Mahardika from uh, Universitas Hindu Negeri uh, Denpasar, Bali for uh, his uh, willingness yeah, to share with us um, his uh, research as well as his um, knowledge yeah, uh, of the topic, yeah, teachers' challenges and solution of ELT in post-pandemic era. Yeah. Baba Ibu, all the participants, I believe that most of you are English teachers and most of you are the uh, actors yeah, of the uh, teaching of English during the pandemic era. And we are here to uh, here to listen and also to discuss yeah, what you have been uh, through um, in your English uh, language teaching uh, with uh, Dr. Wijaya Mahardika. I hope that your time uh, with uh, Dr. Wijaya Mahardika in this very important um, academic um, meeting the best practice of 2022 uh, the first uh, the first uh, program yeah, will uh, provide insights for you yeah, as well as a trigger for you to finally um, develop your personal practical theory yeah i personally um, believe that uh, you are also uh, theorizes of your own practice. Yeah. So I uh, congratulate you everyone for having this very important academic meeting and all the very best with the outcome of this program. Thank you Bu Rahayu for the time. Thank you. Mr. Ahmad Munir for the opening speech. Um, let us welcome our sole keynote speaker, one and only, uh, Dr. Igusti Ngura Agung Wijaya Mahardika. Uh, to get closer to our speaker, let me read some of his academic background. So Dr. Um, Mahardika, or Dr. I. Gusti Ngura Agu Wijaya completed his undergraduate degree from Ikim Negeri Singaraja in English Education, uh, completed master degree in Undiksa Singaraja, also in the same field, English Education, and completed doctoral degree from Universitas Negeri Malang, also majoring in English Education. So, um, Dr. I. Gusti Ngura Agu Wijaya Mardika, time is yours. Mr. Agung Wijaya Madika. Okay, can you hear me, WSD? Yes, I can hear your voice clearly. Is it clear? I'm yes. Sure there seems to be a problem with my device here. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ibu ST, the committee. And first of all, I would like to express my most sincere gratitude to the organizing committee uh, from the English Education Department of UNESA for having me here today. And uh, today I would like to share uh, my experience as an English teacher here teaching in uh, Denpasar State Hindu University of Igusti Bagus Sugriwa. 
I have a little bit about me. I've been teaching English since 2005 in the uh, tertiary level. So before that, uh, I taught in uh, senior high, junior high, and also in elementary school, as well as some other English courses. Now, uh, the way I see it, it's interesting that I've been teaching in the English department only started from 2017 because uh, before that we do not have the English education department which deals specifically with English students. Uh, therefore, before that I used to teach general English for what we call non-specialist uh, English learners. So those learners who study English by design because of being obligated to do so by the lembaga or the university. So they do not really quote unquote want to study English, but they simply have to study English. So uh, today I'm going to uh, share one of my experience and I would like uh, to try to share it as best as I can because there has been express request from the organizing committee bli jangan banyak teori okay uh, thank you very much uh, bapak and ibu uh, for coming i would like to uh, start my presentation with uh, my powerpoint Okay. okay, can everybody see my screen? Okay, now, uh, Today I'm going to talk about uh, my experience uh, teaching my classes in a way we is usually called flip class. So uh, I'm going to start with my problems first. Now the the problem that I found is that oops sorry about that is that when I was teaching English to uh, general students, those who do not belong to the English department, besides having low English uh, competence, they also have low classroom interaction. So I remember distinctly that when I come to the classroom, students would be there physically. However, cognitively or maybe psychologically, they were not really there. They were there. But when you ask them questions, most of the students would like to try to avoid the question. And some of them uh, would give uh, non committal answers and answers that simply fulfill their obligation to answer my question. So it does not really give anything uh, in terms of contribution to the class. Now, uh, it pained me. Uh, to face such condition because I have the idealism that being an English teacher, I will try my best to improve students' uh, competence in English. But it turns out they have uh, low classroom interaction. And when I start asking them questions, they would simply try to run away or hide from those questions. Now, uh, Along the way, I realized that uh, one of the problem which contribute to the classroom interaction is the foreign material. Foreign as in the students do not really uh, read my material despite the fact that they have the book that we were going to use. So I gave them the materials and then uh, naturally I told them to study the material and then 
they came to the class with nothing. So I don't know what they did with my book, but uh, <laughs> fact remains they do not really want to interact uh, with the classroom. And the second uh, problem was unmotivated students. So they have very low motivation. Uh, they seem to be there just to pass the time or simply pass the course. So uh, they do not want to really know the language, let alone practice the language. I later found that one of the major problem that contribute to this lack of motivation is the failure in previous learning in the sense that uh, in the sense that during previous class of english or during previous level of learning uh, they found english to be difficult and it really pushed them against or away from learning english because uh, when i asked them they said what's the point i mean it's not our language it's hard so yeah i'm just here just to get the grade and then graduate it's not like i'm going to use english anyway now this is this has become uh, one of my biggest challenges uh, because i believe that my job as an english teacher is not to simply stamp their grades into the book I mean, I can easily give them A's, but that's not the point. The point is to, in my opinion, to incite them to initiate their wanting to learn English and to use English for their future. Although they are not going to be an English teacher, uh, they still will need English for their future, especially when they become teachers or anything really that deals with uh, the world. So I think I have to do something and it changes my goal from simply teaching English into improve the interaction in the classroom and then to motivate students. I want my students not simply to pass the English course, but also uh, to be able to interact in the class and then to be able to have the motivation to study or use English after the class has ended. Because back then, the English class was uh, seven semesters apart. The first, the general English was in the first semester and the uh, English for daily use was in the eighth semester. So they were seven semesters apart. And uh, usually students lost both their competence and their motivation uh, to learn English, to use the language along these semesters. So again, I want them to have better interaction in the classroom and to motivate them to learn English even after the class has ended. Now, naturally, I'm go not going to talk about improving their English teaching, I'm sorry, improving their English competence because it goes with the territory and it becomes part of the other two goals. So I'm going to focus on goal number two and goal number three. Uh, goal number two, besides teaching English, was improving interaction. Now, I found that the lack of interaction stems from students' unawareness of the material. So again, students were given the material, but they simply, I don't know, refused to read maybe. <laughs> so they do not read the material. And I believe the only way to deal with this is to present the material before classroom meeting, which I already did by giving them the book, but still they do not read. So I have to find a way of forcing them, quote unquote, to read the material to practice themselves. And at the same time, I realized that the material needs to be interesting. So it will uh, initiate or incite their motivation, their willingness to study the material. And 
another source of lack of interaction in my opinion was and still is uh, student has not been pushed to study the material so my mistake was to give them the book and then expect them to read that was a big mistake i think the only way to push the student is to give them exercise to force them to study the material now this has turned me uh, this realization of the phenomenon has turned me into using what we call as flipped learning so flipped learning can be defined as a pedagogical approach and blah 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 now this is the uh, official definition from flipped learning network from 2014. Now I'm not going to focus on that long and winding definition, but I'm going to focus on a more concise but straight to the point definition, which is and the flip learning is a classroom activity which is done at home and homework is done in the classroom. So this definition was offered by Bergman and Sams in 2012 they were credited as the person initiated uh, the flip movement now uh, i believe all of us has seen this and understood this but i'm just going to recap it a bit so flip learning is designed where you or the teacher start the learning before the learning starts in the classroom okay so we start the learning at home, give the material and exercise at home, and then discuss the material and exercise at school, and then give more materials for students to, stu uh, to study at home after the meeting in the classroom. Now, this is the difference between, uh, sorry, this is the definition or the Pembagian tugas of teacher and students in a flat learning setting. So the labor division consists of the teacher and the students. Teacher has the obligation to create video for lectures, to find videos and share it with the student. And then student has to watch the video, the material, prepare questions for the teacher. And then when we meet at school, teacher has to facilitate discussion answer student questions while students naturally has to ask questions and participate in learning activities now it may sound uh, tedious and boring but actually it's not really that bad after i started i designed my own uh, teaching syntax and this is what i would like to propose and share with you today uh, this is my uh, teaching syntax so i usually start my class which uh, is usually 16 meetings although sometimes it is uh, a very uh, hard goal to achieve due to numerous reasons including libur but 16 meeting at least on paper it is now i start the first week with the introduction and then in the introduction i explain to the class about the class contract and then i form pairs well actually i ask the student to start form pairs so they do not have to waste their times uh, later on when i ask them to find a friend to make a conversation for example and during the first meeting, I also ask the student to start making groups of three, of four, and of five. And then they have to write those down and then keep it. So next time I ask them to make groups, they already have their own partners. Now, the activities, the activities are divided into two parts, the classroom activities and the out of class activities those that we do in the classroom and those that we do outside the classroom to make it simple in the first meeting after the end of the classroom meeting 
I have designated the students uh, their own, sorry, our own Google Classroom. And then within the, within the class, I have published the material and then videos on, in this class, uh, the topic is introduction, the first topic, and then I put exercises on the introduction. Now, students has to read the material, watch the videos, and then exercise themselves by submitting videos. Now, this part, the out of class activities, were done after the class, before the next class. So the next class actually has started after the end of the previous class. For example, uh, the one in blue, the ones in blue are part of the first topic. So the topic introducing yourself and introducing others is actually the topic for the second week. But I have started giving the material in the end of the first meeting in the first week. So when we meet the next week, students have done the exercises. Well, actually not all of them has done uh, the exercises, like half maybe, half plus some of the students because uh, students has the tendency of not doing things until there is a, a irrefutable proof that we are going to check the result of the exercise. Now, the first meeting, I give them exercise. On the second meeting, we start recapping on introduction, and then I start playing the video of their submission. And you can see that some of them are starting to panicking because <laughs> they realize that the teacher is now going to uh, play the videos, and some of them did not submit any video. Now, this second meeting becomes a uh, teaching moment for, for them because the next meeting and the meetings after that, they keep on submitting whatever I ask them to do, uh, which becomes a focal point for this uh, approach later on. Now, as you can see here in my syntax, on this, the end of the second meeting, we end with the one in red, actually is part of the third meeting, the third week topic, which is describing people and places. But even before going to the class, I already gave them the material, the videos, the exercises, and I asked them to submit another video of introduction. So the first meeting was on introduction. The, sorry, the first topic was introduction. Uh, I think the, the speaker is being freeze. Uh, Wijaya. Are you here with us? Your screen is freezed. Okay, um, I think our speaker is having the reception troubleshooting. He has this internet technicality. Let us wait for a moment for him to join back.
Pak Wijaya will be joining and uh, will be joining us very soon. He suddenly got out from the uh, Zoom. Pak Wijaya. Yeah, I'm very sorry. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> we were. We were enjoying your presentation and then suddenly uh, your screen. Yeah, I got cut off. Bagai layang-layang putus benang. I'm very sorry for that. Let me try to reshare my uh, PowerPoint. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, now let me continue with that. So again, the idea is to prepare the material for the next meeting and provide the material for the next meeting this week. So students, can learn and more than learn, they are forced to practice what they should have been learning based on the material. So as you can see, uh, the, the topic introducing yourself, introducing others uh, was supposed to be given in the second week, but I have started giving the material in the first week. And then the same goes for the second topic, uh, which was describing people and places slotted to be uh, discussed in the third week but i have given them materials to study in the second week so every week student has the students have to strive to work hard to deal with the materials naturally uh, you need to think about uh, the depth and breadth of the exercises and materials uh, based on the entry behavior or the prior knowledge of the students that you have. Uh, now, that was what I did to improve the interaction. The result of this was that students were a lot more involved, or maybe the term today will be engaged with the uh, learning because they have been prepared by the exercises, by the material that I gave them the week before. So uh, most of the students, I wouldn't dare saying all of the student, most of the student came to the classroom okay, like, uh, before they are no longer empty handed and empty headed. So during previous lesson, I sometimes found students staring blankly into whatever I have written on the board uh, because they just see the material and now they are expected to deal with the material. Sometimes it's just too much for them, especially considering that English is a foreign language to them. So it really works. The approach really works to improve the interaction in the classroom. Now that was uh, the first problem and sorry, the second problem. And the third problem was improving motivation. Now students have very low motivation uh, and they told me, well, outside of the class uh, saying that back then I was teaching in the Pendidikan Agama Hindu and Pendidikan Bahasa Daerah Bali departments. And they told uh, then they told me that I don't understand why do we need to study English because we're not going to be English teacher. Uh, there is going to be very low probability that we're going to use English and so on. And then I have to explain to them that regardless of what you're doing in life, having the abilities to speak English is a big plus. And I realized that I really need some to do something to improve their motivation. Now, based on my observation, I found that, as I have stated before, uh, students experienced failure in previous learning and they felt bad. They were, uh, how should I put it, hurt uh, by the failure. And uh, they went to a point where they think it's useless or in Bahasa Indonesia we call it ya udah usah belajar lagi. Gak ada gunanya juga. Something like that. And 
uh, other than that, the thing that I realized was that I, as a teacher, also contribute a lot into the lack of motivation or the decrease of motivation. Uh, for example, teachers, when I say teachers, means me, uh, highlight failure, not success. Now, this, this is a big problem which uh, pointed out to me by my wife because my wife uh, teaches in elementary school and then she would hear me saying like my student make this kind of mistake blah 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 and uh, she told me that well yeah uh, they make mistakes but i believe they also make progress and uh, it puts me into position to realize that uh, all these years i've been uh, focusing on their failure instead of success even in giving the assessment i would focus on saying this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong instead of saying this is right but yeah you made a mistake here so uh, it was a quite a big revelation for me personally and the third reason is that teachers provide little reinforcement uh, considering that I was teaching in a tertiary level with what we call adult students, I have to admit that I have been very stingy with reinforcement. I mean, uh, this I think stems from uh, the third, sorry, the fourth reason. So I'm going to cover the fourth reason at the same time, which a uh, teacher fails to see students' level of knowledge. In my, in my friend's uh, words, kamu melihat muridmu berdasarkan kemampuanmu. That is one of the big problem that I had because uh, most of the time I would think like, kok nggak bisa sih, cuman segitu aja padahal. Masa gini aja nggak ngerti. Now, this is uh, what I have been doing wrong for all these years because I see students level of knowledge from my own level of knowledge because i understand what the reading is about i expect them to have the same understanding thus when they do something right i do not feel the need to reinforce the behavior because i took it for granted saya anggap itu hal yang biasa oh, ya wajarlah dia bisa udah anak kuliah masa main ID aja nggak ngerti. Now this kind of uh, point of view, this kind of paradigm in myself have put me across the river from the students. I mean this uh, it took me years to understand that for students those kind of things which may seem trivial for the teacher is actually a point or a milestone in learning. And I realized after years of learning, I realized that I made terrible mistakes along the way uh, when I have called myself as teacher. So uh, yes, we all learn from our mistakes and I hope today uh, all the participants here can learn from what I did wrong and do not do the same mistake that I did. Now, based on this revelation, so to speak, uh, I learned that this is the normal learning cycle. So this is what I have in my mind. First, you work hard, and then you achieve success. And then after you achieve success, you will have a sense of achievement what we call as a yay moment. Yay, I did this. Yay, I did that, and so on. And then after you have the sense of achievement, you foster and you bolster your self-confidence. So like a, a kid who is trying the bicycle for the first time, when he or she can ride for 100 meters, it's a success, and then they will feel a sense of achievement and they are ready to take even more 100 meters. Now, this is what I have in my mind. 
because frankly speaking this is what happened to me after i realized those problems my mistakes i tried to change my idea uh, as supported by a result sorry a research result from lee and pan and change the cycle of learning a little bit into this now what if instead of asking them to work hard we give student a sense of achievement through success so we ask them to do something whatever they do no matter how high or how low the achievement is we take it as a form of success and we reward them for that so they have a sense of achievement which will build their self confidence and will later on push them to work harder now this is the kind of framework that i have been working on in the sense that from the, from the time of realization of my mistakes i move from asking them to work hard into rewarding their success uh, back then i consider rewarding their success is part of what i call my wife's been doing ajarana sd sedikit sedikit dikasih bintang sedikit sedikit dikasih bintang bisa nyebut hari aja dapat stars but it turns out that all students of all level need this kind of success although not necessarily we have to give them stars but the idea the concept remains that all students need to be appreciated and needs to be and needs to have their success and achievement acknowledged something which i have totally neglected for years before and uh, to improve their motivation in doing flip class i gave them exercise and then during the meeting in the classroom i reward them so they can have the success that they well that they really work hard for now these are the four things that in my opinion will help students to improve their motivation based on my experience the first is to provide exercises the idea of providing exercises is again first to familiarize the students with the material and second to be the foundation of success naturally you cannot give reward for nothing so you need to have some sort of reason to give the student some sort of rewards and the reason is their ability to do the exercises regardless of how high how low how few they can do the exercises that we presented before the classroom activity and the second is feedback now research has shown numerous research has shown that feedback is a very useful tools which unfortunately have been neglected by teacher ie me Again, I can always hide behind. Oh, saya sibuk sekali. Uh, <laughs> feedback is a must, and it's a lot easier when you have uh, LMS like Google Classroom, where you can provide feedback for the class or uh, a tailor-made, person-based feedback. But feedback is important. Uh, I still feel guilty of having students' uh, papers which i grade but did not give any feedback and just simply uh staking there waiting for the ujian akhir so i can put the grades into uh, the system and i realized that it was a missed opportunity for me to actually push my students into a better student and at the same time push me into a better teacher and next is provide appreciation for whatever achievement that they uh, manage to achieve which is very important again something which i dearly neglected 
and the last is provide a second chance now a second chance is very important what i meant by second chance is a chance for student to redeem themselves for example during the exercise period i asked them to make a video of introduction and then they did their best but it did not go up to the point where i expected them to be and then after the classroom uh, the, the classroom discussion they have better knowledge they have better uh, better way of expressing themselves however i fail to provide a second chance i fail to give them another exercise so they can use their newly found knowledge and improve themselves i realized that i realized that, uh, sorry i realized this after uh, some student said wah kalau saya dikasih kesempatan lagi saya bisa bikin lebih bagus pak karena sekarang saya udah tahu mestinya bikin apa nah this made me realize that we need to provide a second chance so exercise and then they do something anything appreciate whatever they did and then give them a second chance to improve themselves now i found that giving a second chance really works because students those who really want to learn those who are motivated becomes very good learners even after the classroom again uh, my general english was only for two credit semester so it was uh, 100 meetings per week for 16 week and then some of those students even still uh, sorry even ask question after they have graduated from the class with good grades so improving motivation i believe is one of uh the important task for us english teachers so they will be able to have the willingness the drive the push to study english even after the class has ended especially when you are teaching in a general class who whose student do not aim to be english teacher or english speaker now up to this point i've been talking about uh, the flip learning experience and uh, this is going to be the next part the next part is the weaknesses of this approach i found that there are at least four weaknesses the first is it requires thorough preparation so you need to prepare the whole lesson at least four meetings ahead uh, you cannot go in into the class in what we call kejar tayang so come to the class you read the book and then uh, teach the students you simply cannot do that you have to prepare the class even for the class in the next month but i do not see any problem with this because with with teachers we have clear curriculums and uh, clear materials of what we need to do and uh, the second is it requires a lot of time i cannot emphasize this enough you will need we will need time to prepare the material we will need time to read the result of the exercise before the classroom and then we will need time to read the exercise that the student submitted after the classroom so yes it's going to require a lot of time and the third is requires technical know-how from both parties which means both the teacher and the students need to be able to work in this kind of it based environment so even if the teachers knows what to do it will be quite useless when the students do not know what to do which brings us to the fourth weakness which is it requires internet infrastructure for both the teacher and the students 
Because let's face it, we have to admit it. Uploading video requires what we call internet credits or in Bahasa Indonesia we call kuota. Watching the video also require kuota. So for both the teacher and the students, it will require internet infrastructure. Now I'm talking about kuota here. I have not even talk, start talking about the if I, uh, availability of the internet connection itself. Because having kuota or pulsa will be useless when you don't have the signals. So yes, you need to have internet infrastructure for both the teacher and the students. Naturally, you can do this paper-based, but in my opinion, doing flip learning paper-based is not going to be as fun and as interactive when we do it in an IT-based uh, learning management system. Because learning management system, the IT-based, uh, consists of means which enable us to interact with students. Now, Bapak and Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was my experience and I hope uh, we all can learn from my mistakes and we all can learn from uh, what I have tried to do during uh, my tenure working as an English lecturer in a general English situation. Now, I would like uh, to invite any question from the audience and the participant. Now, let me stop this first. Thank you, yes. uh, Dr. I, I Gusti Ngura Agung Wijaya Mardika. Yeah, Your Ibu, you, can very long me, <laughs> you can always call me Wijaya because Wijaya, okay, my yes. name is very long, so it's going to, <laughs> to be a pain. <laughs> call me with my full name that's correct yes uh that that was a fruitful presentation from you uh there is one question from the audience in the chat box if you don't mind um reading okay. it yeah from, uh, Pak, from Miki Hartono. Pak Miki Hartono yeah how can we connect the learning goal from first week to the second week using application okay confirming schedule tasks or something else thank you now uh bapa miki thank you for the question now i use the uh, the easy way of using google classroom so uh up to this point google classroom has been very useful for me uh i've tried using whatsapp but it's how should i put it uh it's very difficult because you have to do everything manually when, with WhatsApp. So when using WhatsApp, this is what I do. I made a schedule on Excel and I have to remind myself using my calendar to post uh, the material in the WhatsApp group. And then I expect students to read them. And then I tried uh, for the students to send the result of their exercises through WhatsApp group. And then you got a bunch of uh, pictures, you got a bunch of videos, and then it's hard when you have more than one videos, uh, let's say more than five, it's going to be clustered into one. So sometimes in WhatsApp, you have uh, one, two, three, four, plus six. It's hard to check one video and then reply, give comment. Uh, it did not take me long to realize that it simply won't cut it. WhatsApp simply won't cut it. So you simply need to use some sort of uh, learning uh, management system. I personally use uh, Google Classroom. It's a lot easier because you simply upload the material and then you can schedule the material to be published uh, before the next uh, meeting. So it's a lot easier to use LMS, Pak Miki. I've tried using WhatsApp. If you teach maybe only 10 students, I think it's doable. But if you teach more than 10, it's going to be hard. Yes, I'm not going to say it's impossible. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to take a lot of effort because practically, 
uh, commenting on the video, selecting the video and give your comments, it's going to be hard. It's hard to track who has done which one because again, every student need to do at least two exercises, the pre-meeting exercise and the post-meeting exercise, the second chance exercise. So uh, in my opinion, you can always try using Google Classroom to do this. It really works best with Google Classroom. I cannot say that it's not going to work with other LMS because to be honest, I have no access to any other LMS at this point because uh, the university uses Google Classroom due to the Google Suite that we have. I hope that answers uh, Pak Miki's question. Yes. Um, Pak Wijaya, there are yes. two questions. You want to respond to two questions at once or one by one? Okay, uh, let me read the question first. From Ibu Tutut and the other one from Ibu Titis. I think Ibu Tutut uh, questions the same as Ibu Ketut Anita. Because, um, yeah. yeah, Bu Ketut is asking if you have 40 students in class and there are so many Libur Day in yes. Indonesia. <laughs> and the other one is um, asking about uh, material and Merdeka Belajar. Yes, uh, I realized that uh, it will not be easy to copy and paste uh, the method that I presented just now, my experience into a different setting. So because we have to acknowledge uh, university setting and junior and senior high school would have different uh, waktu belajar. So we have different curriculums, we have different uh, requirements for the learning process, but in my opinion, it can, it still can be done. However, it will take, yeah, as I said before, it will take uh, the amount of effort and the amount of time, uh, which is more than the usual burden for the teacher. And uh, for example, uh, for Bu Ketut Antari, if we teach 40 students in the class, how can we manage them to be at the same eagerness to join the topic study? I'm afraid we cannot. So again, uh, just to make it clear, uh, I deal with a class which range from 30 to 40 students. And if there is a question after you use this kind of method, uh, this kind of practice, can you improve the motivation of all the students, I'm afraid I cannot say so. I cannot 100% guaranteed stating that I can improve all of their achievement, all of the student's achievement. But what I can see is that as a class, they interact a lot better. And they have the motivation to study the second topic when they learn that I really work on the first topic. So as I found out, a lot of things happen because of what uh, Ibu Titis called as dosa uh, turunan. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I'm not blaming anyone, but maybe the previous class has seen that students were given tasks and then they uh, put it in form of papers and then the papers is used as bungkus kacang without no feedback. Uh, it's going to be hard to expect the whole 40 students to improve their motivation. But again, this is a work in progress. I would not dare to say that this is going to improve uh, your student because again, every student is different. But as a class, it will change the interaction and the flow of knowledge in the class. Because as I stated before, 
the biggest problem i believe is that students were for the lack of better term were tabrak lari by the media the material because they were not were never prepared for the material but by giving pre meeting exercises students are prepared to have the material in the classroom they already know what the material is and they learn what uh, they are going to talk about in the class next week so it really helps them it really prepares them to come to class with something and i've seen students who wanted sort of challenge the teacher and challenge the other students with what they found from the learning now uh, answering uh, i hope that answers uh, the question from ibu tutut and a bit from ibu ketut antari uh, and for the second question from ibu ketut antari is that uh, there should be second chance yes for everyone toward the topic how do we manage the time limitation especially when we yes uh, the the way i did this was to give them based on the lms uh, system give them personalized message so you can uh, comment personally on each and every one submission by the student and then uh, we give we ask the students to submit the second chance and then well in my opinion it's hard to find the time but sometimes you just have to make the time uh, to read all those uh, submission but then again it go back to the first goal which to improve their motivation when they submit the second chance it means that they are motivated enough to do the same thing again and i believe we have to make time to at the very least appreciate what they did so what i did was rewatch their uh, submission the second uh, i think we have the same technicality problems again with our keynote speaker. Give us a moment, we try to reach him back for you. Yeah, we still uh, contacting Pak Wijaya. He is trying to joining back. I hope the audience is patient enough to wait for Pak Wijaya to join us back.
Okay, I cannot. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I just got kicked, and now I have an empty chat box. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, we we have written it up for you. Okay, okay, please. Uh, I yes. thought the last question was about the time from Bu Ketut. So I yes. would like to readdress that uh, problem. Yes, uh, the time will always be a problem. And uh, I have to, well, me personally have to deal with that by uh, staying and spending a lot more time on my screen to check uh, my students' work. Now, it would be unfair to judge or to give comments to the other teacher's situation by uh, based on my situation, but I'm afraid, uh, yeah, it's very hard uh, to find another way to do this other than I'm afraid we need to make time to read all those uh, submission, to watch all those videos from the students. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to answer. I hope that answers Bu, uh, Buketut Antari. And then there is one above Buketut that I um, want to answer. I tap it for you from Butini. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. From okay, it's gonna. Okay, uh, the idea of the uh, giving exercises is to force them to read the material. So, uh, in my opinion, again, uh, we go back to the weaknesses of this approach, which requires technical know-how and then requires inter internet infrastructure. Uh, the idea of giving the exercise, the pre-meeting exercise, is to force the student to read the material. If the students do not read the material, even with the exercises, then I'm afraid we have to go back to the normal way of teaching and ask them to read the materials. It may take them more than one or two times experiencing that reality check. I mean that experiencing the fact that the teacher really checks the exercises. Again, uh, when I first do this, not more than half of the students submit the exercise because they think, ah, nggak bakal diperiksa apa. But when we do discuss the material uh, in the classroom, they realize that, oh, oh, the teacher is being serious and things is getting serious and they started to read the material. Naturally, uh, since the material that we are going to give is not really, uh, is, is not supposed to be exactly the same from the material that we're teaching at school, we can tone down or adjust the material difficulty level for the students. Uh, remember, in my opinion, we still, we always need to appreciate whatever achievement that students can deliver. So if you have to lower the difficulty from the one in the buku packet, then I think we should do that. We should give the students a reason to achieve that milestone of success, even though it means that we have to tone it down a bit. Oh, nanti di kelas kita akan bicara based on the materials that we were given on the curriculum. Uh, that's for uh, Ibu Tini and from Pak Selamat. Uh, no, I'm very sorry, Pak Selamat. I have not published uh, any paper on this. As usual, I have the framework, <laughs> the kerangka berpikir, but uh, due to so many things, including watching all those videos, I have very limited time for the time being to write this. Uh, and to be honest, there has been a number of publications, well, a lot of publications talking about flip learning. I think uh, there has been people out there who more or less talk about this. 
I have to admit that I have not seen uh, the psychological effect because uh, usually it's uh, achievement based or uh, ranking based research on flip to show the effectiveness of flip and so on. Uh, however, I have to say that I have not read that many paper on flip learning, so I cannot say for sure that there has not been anybody else working on a better version of what I present here today. Uh, so I encourage uh, Pak Slamet and, every, and all the participants to check uh, the latest uh, latest situation or uh, what do we call it? Uh, there's a term for that I totally forgot. So the, the recent situation in flip learning uh, and English language teaching. Because yeah, I have not written anything on this. Actually, I think one of my friends did uh, wrote on flip learning. And from... Uh, yes, two questions from yeah. Bululu Atun. Yeah. Um, is flip learning applicable? Okay. Uh, is it applicable on every level? Yes. Again, we just need to simply uh, simplify the material. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's just a method and this method can be done to all uh, students provided that the student has, again, the internet infrastructure to access the material uh, that we provide the student. Can we use this uh, for elementary school? In my opinion, yes, why not? However, we need to simplify the materials uh, to fit the student's need. And then the second question, how can we define success based on the proposed learning cycle? Okay, now in my uh, learning cycle, it's a lot easier because uh, I use my own uh, standard of grading. However, for uh, teachers teaching in senior, junior, or elementary school, Bapak Ibu can use your own grading scheme because the idea of uh, using flipped learning is to improve students' engagement with the material prior to the learning. So it does not erase the need of meeting in the classroom. So you still do uh, the learning and you can still do your normal uh, grading process. Even with the, uh, the flip learning method because it simply adds the learning activities instead of exchanging the learning activities with the other type of activities. So it's actually, uh, in my opinion, in, in my friend's opinion, that heard about what I did is it's simply nambah kerjaan. <laughs> when you need to explain about, for example, let's say introduction. In normal learning cycle, you just need to explain it in the classroom. In flip learning, you need to explain it before the class and then need to recap it again in the class. So yes, it can be used and uh, it still uses the same grading system that you use today. It simply adds another layer of learning experience for the students prior to the learning that takes place in the class. Okay, I hope that answers uh, Bu Luluwato Nimah questions and Bu Okay, uh, Bu, question, Bu, Bu Ketut Ketut, yeah, yes. would like to ask a question directly to you. Bu yes, Ketut? please. Please proceed. Uh, yes, thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I am Ibu Antari, so very nice to meet you all here. Welcome, Ibu Ketut. Everyone. Yeah, so what a meaningful uh, explanation from Mr. Wijaya. I do thank you very much. So uh, it adds some ideas in my uh, teaching uh, planning for the next time. 
uh, the only question that happened to me, I have been, actually, I have been, uh, you know, trying this method uh, mm -hmm. a few, few years ago before the pandemic, but uh, I was failed. Why? Because every time I check the student prior to the classroom, so uh, would you please study this material, bring me some questions, some ideas, or some improvement. We are going to discuss it at our next meeting at the mm -hmm. All right, Ibu, yes, we'll do, yeah. Thank you, Ibu, thank you, blah, 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 and blah. And then when the time came, when we arrived at the class, I took them, so that was at this, and discussed about the topic. Only one third of them were responding well. <laughs> and the others, oh, sorry, Ibu, I'm so tired. Sorry, Ibu, was not time enough to, to learn it, to, to, to get some materials or study anything else. So... If that case happened to you, Mr. Vijaya, how do you feel about that? And uh, is there something that you have been doing to overcome that situation? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the great question, Bu Ketut. And when you ask me, what if that happened? Actually, it did. <laughs> and I believe it still do. And uh, how do I feel? I feel so bad. Uh, uh, I mean... Sometimes I feel that the government do not pay me enough to have to suffer this emotional problems. And yes, uh, sometimes I question uh, my ability and the fut my future as an English teacher when I have this kind of students. But uh, to be perfectly honest, one third, that's already a lot. That's 30%. I mean... Uh, I don't know how, how to put this, but one of my professor, when I was in undergraduate and taught me TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language, and I posed this a similar question to her. I asked her, Ibu, what should we do if some students simply cannot be pushed forward? So. The answer was try again. Okay, what if I try again and then they still there? Try again. Okay, let's say I try again and they are still there, Ibu. And her answer is one of the things that I still bring to class even today. Her answer was, you did your best. It takes student and teacher to have a teaching learning process. A teacher alone cannot work with everything in the world if the students are not motivated. So again, Ibu, by doing this, you are trying your best to motivate the students. So what should we do? We keep on going, we keep on doing, but there will be students who simply refuse to move from whatever Posisi wena that we have today. But it does not mean that we have to stop. I mean, uh, if one third of your student becomes motivated, hopefully the other will be joining the bandwagon of being motivated. But in the worst case uh, of the scenario, at least you have one third of your student it's a lot better than zero. I know it's painful to say and it, it's, it is even more painful to hear, but uh, we tried our best and some students uh, barring, forcing them to do something. Uh, in, my, in my situation, it's a lot easier to push students by saying, I'm not going to pass you if you're not doing this. But in senior high school and junior high school, it's a totally different world out there. So what I'm doing in the sense of forcing the student will not be applicable to senior high school. But Ibu, I would like you uh, to realize that by doing something beyond what you do in the classroom is already doing something beyond and above the call of duty. So you yes, did <laughs> you did better than everybody else who's yeah, not doing anything. 
Yeah, sometimes I'm thinking so maybe government should uh, you know do something about it because the problem is not the money, the problem is not the time. Actually, when I was asking the student, why were you so that motivated and why were you so that demotivated? They said, Ibu, sometimes if the topic were interesting to us, uh, for example, because I'm teaching at vocational school, mm -hmm. they were refer to a topic like um, uh, helping help, uh, uh, what's like a customer service, handling mm -hmm. phone and reception. That way, but when we we come to the narrative or local level, something else like that, they were all almost all of them were very motivated. Why should we learn this topic? If we look at the hotel industry, we don't need dongeng, we don't need uh, <laughs> blah blah blah. We just need uh, you know the best practice one. That curriculum merdeka will be the answer. And I feel so very, you know, I want to ngambul istilahnya in Indonesia, in Bali. You just want to turn your back away and just leave this to the others. Okay, I've been there, Ibu. But, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much. Uh, I may try it at this semester, this uh, coming semester. Thank you for the explanation and also for it. everyone. Thank you and have a good day. I'm still here uh, watching and following. Thank you, Bapak Wijaya. Thank you, uh, Buketut, for the insight. Yes, yes. Uh, I have to admit that we do find that kind of students. And I believe English is not the only uh, type of material that has that kind of students. I think my mathematics teacher will have that same opinion about me back in the day. Uh, and it is interesting that... Uh, you brought uh, up the relationship between what we're teaching and what they need. Um, uh, Pak Wijaya, yes. sorry to interrupt. Bu Pratiwi is raising hand. Okay. Oh, Bu. Okay. Thank you, Bu uh, Ketut. Uh, Bu Pratiwi, please. Uh, thank you very much, Pak Wijaya. So, first of all, um, apologies for a very late greeting. As I have to <laughs> it's do. okay, I Bu. I done that uh, much earlier. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for agreeing to be part of our, our best practices. Uh, so I have a, a question um, regarding your uh, response on uh, the importance of uh, developing grading system. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, that that is something that we really have to appreciate because I think uh, personally, I think it's, it's really important that teachers develop their uh, skills and competencies to develop their own ways, their own best practices in terms of uh, assessment, yeah, in this case, grading system. Uh, so thank you very much for, for mentioning that. Uh, however, we also realize that to be able to develop uh, our own uh, assessment rubrics, uh, grading system, there should be some kind of criteria or parameters that we could refer to uh, so that the way we assess our students uh, performances uh, would be, uh, you know, valid, reliable. Mm -hmm. So, any anything that you'd like to say about, uh, you know, this uh, or, or setting this kind of parameters? Should we refer to some uh, existing theories, or is there any way that, that teachers could do after this? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ibu Pratiwi, and uh, I think Pratiwi. this ties with Pak Miki's question with uh, us about the use of LMS, uh, where we teachers need to remember how to assess our students' work and surely record it uh, as an improvement process and so on. Now, uh, I would like to try to answer both questions at the same time. Uh, first, for uh, the rubrics, well, for me, being a teacher in tertiary level, it's very easy for me to define my materials because I have sort of a bit freer hand to define what I'm going to teach and to define my own uh, grading system as long as it conforms with the university grading system. And... Uh, to answer your question, do we need to have some sort of uh, theoretical foundation? I believe so. And uh, there is no lack 
of uh, theoretical foundation to work on almost every bit of English learning. Now, uh, let's say we want to uh, grade writing. There has been rubric which has been, uh, let's say, foolproof through a number of researches and we can simply take that rubric and then adapt it based on our needs and our situation in the field. Uh, and I think it exists for, for every single part of English, be it writing, speaking, reading, or listening. We have uh, the, I have uh, deal with writing, beforehand and also listening and currently i'm dealing with uh, grading speaking for my students so yes we uh, surely need at least two things the first is the theoretical background uh, of whatever skill that we would like to assess and the second is practical background for example uh, when we want to, now, this is the latest uh, rubric that I uh, have to develop to, to check my, to assess my students' speaking uh, performance. Now, the theory does not talk about the localized culture in speaking. Meanwhile, we as Indonesian, as Eastern people, has our own culture, and this has to be taken into account because as the government outlined it we need to teach them characters so it it wouldn't be useful for uh, to have smart students with no characters so we need to put that characters in a measurable way uh, one of the part of the character is how one present the speaking which is not outlined by the theory and how should one dress or act when they do their speaking in terms of giving a speech or presenting a paper. Now, this kind of uh, insight can only be done by teachers who are facing the student in real field experience. So yes, uh, the theory can be used. Well, I have to say that again, we have to base on a theory and uh, we have to remember that theory can only go so far we still also need to consider our own situation, our own condition, and incorporate this into something which is, uh, I should put it, quantifiable, measurable into our uh, rubric in uh, teaching and assessing students' ability. Uh, that, I hope, answers Ibu Pratiwi's question. And uh, I would like to move to Pa uh, Miki Hartono's second part of the uh, of the question: uh, How to assess our student work and surely record it as improvement process recording for our students? Okay. Uh, now I cannot say for sure, but I believe that every LMS has their innate or in uh, built-in system for giving the grades. Uh, as far as I have tried Google Classroom, it has a very good system of keeping the scores from uh, the feedback that you give to the student. Naturally, uh, if you have a bit of a problem with the LMS, I'm afraid you have to go back to the old style of, I don't know if you can see it or not, the old style of this, <laughs> the, the paper-based, uh, paper-based recording system. So we call it daftar nilai. And sometimes I still have to write those down just in case I have a problem with the internet or the system itself, just like what happened twice in two hours today. I'm losing connection. So yes, I think all of the LMS and Surely, Google Classroom has a system to check the result of every single assessment that you put in to the system of the Google Classroom. By the end, you have a list of your material. 
sorry, the list of your scores for the students. And uh, talking about LMS, one of the things that I just found out when I started using Zoom around uh, last year, the mid, the mid of last year, if I'm not mistaken, I started using Zoom uh, quite frequently. It turns out that they have a system to report who's in the class for how many minutes. So it helps me a lot uh, in measuring students' attendance in the class. Because in the old days, I still have to check their names and see whether they're present or not. But because I have not that big of a screen, I cannot see all the students. But it turns out Zoom keep it for me for at least one month. So I can always log in into the Zoom account and check. You can simply see that I've been teaching for 110 minutes, for example. Some students will be there for two minutes. Some students will be there for 100 minutes. And sometimes uh, you have to be wary with students who are there as long as you are. So I once tried to keep my Zoom on after the class ended. Lo and behold, the students are still there. Even after I say the class has ended, you can leave. There are still three or four students still in the Zoom. I assume that they did not even attend the class because the camera were off and they simply there and hope that I will close the Zoom when the class ended. So yes, uh, to answer your question, the LMS has a built-in system to check for the scoring system. And again, uh, we have to be, uh, to be aware of uh, students who are not that far away from us in terms of uh, ability in dealing with the technology. Uh, the more I teach with technology, the more I realize that students are very good in doctoring the technology and finding loopholes we, even with all the applications that we have with all the technology that we have students are actively trying to find a way to miss the class and at the same time looking as if they are in the class okay i hope that answers uh Pak Miki's question uh, i would like to return the time to bu rahayu um, yes, uh, uh, Wijaya, I think your um, term for the students who are um, present but off cam is ghosting student. <laughs> yes, yeah. ghosting is a very good term. <laughs> I mean, I left, I left the Zoom there for like two hours. I went out, went back. The Zoom is still on. They are still there. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> they are, um, yeah, I think they are ghosting you. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Pak Wijaya, um, is doing flip learning manageable so far, considering the limitations? Yes, uh, but again, I cannot say that is uh, uh, all of the students, as I'm very sorry, all the teachers that are going to do this will have the same uh, experience. You have to take into account a couple of things. First, I live in a place where... Uh, here in Bali, almost every single uh, part of Bali is covered with internet connection. I live in Denpasar where uh, you have, well, quite good internet connection, although today begs to differ. Uh, and then students, my students uh, are tertiary students. So they are mahasiswa, which has inherently different motivation than senior high school. We have to see, we have to acknowledge that uh, students in the junior and senior high school is more or less forced by the situation to go to school because they do not have any other choices, right? Uh, either you stay, uh, you go to school or you stay at Perempatan and uh, doing something else. However, for tertiary students for mahasiswa, it's a different setting. The mahasiswa has other option. They are not really forced to study. So those who come to campus, those who decided to study, 
has more or less higher motivation because again uh, they have the other choices of working or sleeping but they chose to go to school so at the very basis their entry behavior is a bit higher than those in senior high school now my problem was that my students do not study to be an english teacher or those who wants to speak english in daily basis because they are teaching uh, sorry they are majoring in another department but still they i believe they still have a little bit higher motivation compared to other students who are forced beyond their own will to study so that's the one we have uh, the let's say established internet coverage and internet uh, infrastructure and the second we uh, well i myself have the students who can more or less easier to be pushed to study because we we have to admit that being a university teacher uh, i have a bit of freer hand in deciding the fate of my students i cannot we cannot say the same with uh, senior and junior high school teachers because there are uh, there are uh, forces beyond the teachers which may uh, take part in deciding the learning process and the learning result of the students we have to admit that so it will be unfair to predict or forecast the effectiveness of this method when it is used by other teachers with different situation with me but if the question is it is applicable in all level just as before yes it is applicable will it be as easy or as the way i applied it it most likely will not be the same and for the time being i am i am having a very good time uh, doing flip learning because uh, again students are no longer staring into the abyss <laughs> it's a very bad thing when you ask the students question and they simply say no sir i don't know it's it's a lot better it's a lot better they answer something they made mistake but hey making mistake is part of learning so at least uh they have studied what i give them and it uh greatly reduced that pang of how should i put it that pang of uh, loneliness when you feel that the students simply are not interested in what you are teaching. Okay, I hope that answers Bu Rahayu's uh, comment just now. Yes, uh, thank you for your explanation. So, um, flip learning is very good to uh, to work on low motivation students, correct? Because uh, that's Pututut put asked uh, uh, questions, last question. Yes, uh, it works on students with low motivation. Uh, it works on students with low motivation. However, we have again to admit that there will be students who are very hard to force. Again, you simply need to try it. And well, trying this, even just trying this would be a lot better, a better effort as a teacher compared to not doing this at all. So I would like really uh, to really suggest teachers to try this. Uh, naturally, you have to uh, consider the weaknesses before going into the application of this method. Be forewarned that it's not going to be a walk in the park, <laughs> at least for the first few meetings. There will always be students who are told to read and did not read. Yes, agree. Okay, uh, one more question from the audience. You okay, can please. raise a hand or type in the chat book, uh, chat box. Sorry. Any more questions from the audience? So it's very interesting, Pak Wijaya. Um, 
listening to your presentation on flip learning because I've never uh, done flip learning myself. So thank you, Ibu. Um, what is the difference between blended and flip? Is there any like smallest difference? Uh, well, I think the difference would lie on uh, the preparation set of flip. So in flip, the idea is flipping the uh, the learning setting between homework and schoolwork. It's the basis of the whole idea. So I think that is the greatest uh, difference between uh, the two. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Uh, while waiting for the audience, um, okay. let me... If, yes. uh, if I may, I would like to ask the audience this, this, uh, this burning question. That yes, I be my have. guest. Yes. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, actually the, the article is still in publication, asked a bunch of students uh, this question. Do you think you, uh, technology will replace teachers? Shockingly, 33% of students ask, answer, yes, technology will replace teachers. Now, we have to understand that this research was conducted in 2019, before the pandemic, before we are forced to learn using all this gadget, all these softwares, and so on. So I would like to ask and pose this question to the teachers here, and I would like to hear from the teachers, the voices from the teachers, the answer to this question. With all the technological advances today and in the future, are we teachers still relevant? Now, I would like to hear from the teachers. Yes, With, audience. Um, for any all for LMS, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, enhanced uh, virtual reality, are we still relevant in the future? What do you think? No, this is not a testing question, okay? There will be no score on this. I just want to know because uh, this is a burning question inside of me as, as a teacher. What do you think, Bapa and Ibu? Are we going to replace by a bunch of robots? Okay, Butitis, would you like uh, please share your opinion? Uh, let me unmute. Oh yes, Butitis, go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, Pak Vijaya, Bu Rahayu. Okay. Uh, I teach in, what is it? Not remote area, yeah, but a small town, Borong. And I think teacher's presence will still be relevant. Mm -hmm. You see, for about one and a half year during the online classes, uh, most of them said when they meet me personally, they said, ah, they get bored, ma'am. Most of the time, I can understand what, what you, your video, talk about. Mm -hmm. And when we meet in any, any classes offline, yeah, at school, they said that, please, will, will you come to our real class again, mm -hmm. ma'am, and so on. That's, that's before the, what is it, before the pandemic end. And nowadays, I think it's still relevant because after the whole time, something missed. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't have any psychological value that actually they can have emotional value that they should process, they should experience during the day because the unpresence of the real teacher. I don't know whether the case will be different if the technology is advanced in other cities and other globe, but in our case, they still exist. The teacher person is still needed by the student human 
will need another human as the basic uh the basic lines of everyone is the is needed uh, needs other persons that's all thank you okay thank you butitis so uh, i think butitis and i have similar uh Hopes. Saya nggak berani bilang jawaban ya. <laughs> We have similar understanding and similar hopes for the future. I don't know. Mungkin ke depan akan ada Terminator yang I'm gonna be your teacher. Answer me or I'll shoot you. I don't know. But uh, Pak Miki, uh, do you have anything to say? I saw that you raise your hand there. I think Pak yeah. Himawan is also raising hand. Okay. <laughs> Pak Himawan. Yes. Thank you, Pak. Uh, Wijaya Purahayu. I remember joining the workshop uh, held by uh, held by the British Council. I forgot his uh, the, the the presenter's name, but uh, they, they were talking about the use of AI in the teaching of English. So I was I was all, I was going to ask a question, and then uh, and I, the other participants of that web, uh, web webinar asked the same question, uh, which the same question that you have, Pak Wijaya. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any possibilities that? AI will replace humans, uh, teachers in the future, and that uh, I forgot it is from the United States. Um, no, he said that no, don't worry. So I've been teaching English for 20 years, and then I don't think that AI will replace human teachers in the future. So he was still very convinced that um, no, nothing can replace human teachers in the future. Yes, AI will, will be will will develop a very advanced. So until today, I don't know. AI. He said that AI is still well, there is still a missing thing um, related to human and machines. So machines mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. does not have this thing called emotions that human have. So AI will not be able to know exactly <clears throat> the feeling of our students, whether the students really understand the questions from the expressions of their faces, from the tone of their voices when they answer the questions. So we can do that. Human can only do that. So I think, yes, the answer is still, for now, I still, I'm, I'm still very convinced that technology cannot, cannot uh, replace uh, uh, human teachers. So we still need, We are still needed. <laughs> so that's what okay. I can say about. <laughs> Thank you, Faimawan. And I, I, I cannot fail to notice the the operative word of still. Uh, <laughs> the AI still cannot mimic fully our human uh, emotional interaction. And well, again, uh, we are still relevant and. I don't know, Pak Himawan. I mean, maybe this is just me being paranoid after watching too many robots movies. But right, yeah, right. Uh, which brings me. Uh, I mean, Bu uh, Titis stated that we bring what we call maybe uh, human touch. Yeah, yeah human exactly. touch uh, to right. education. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine uh, put it this way: Robot bisa ngajar tapi tidak bisa mendidik. And uh, I turned to him and said, "Belum, just like <laughs> Pak Himawan, still <laughs> not yet." I mean, uh, today I can tell uh, Google Assistant to turn off my computer, to mm -hmm. turn on my mm -hmm. AC. Exactly. I can ask Google uh, where is the nearest restaurant. Mm -hmm. I fear that one day Google will start giving me relationship advice based on whatever <laughs> it hears when we my wife and I are in the car so right. uh, yeah now a tie in question is that uh, uh, yes I believe let's just be safe here <laughs> I believe up to this point we can we are still relevant at yeah. least until the near future uh, so we can keep the job yes Say, for the time being, Ibu. For the time being. <laughs> We don't need to look for another profession. <laughs> for the right. time being, yes. Uh, what we have to, to see that uh, Tukang Cetak Foto is having a bad day because everybody mm -hmm. with a printer can already print their pictures at home. Already, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Fuji does not uh, produce any films, picture, mm -hmm. no longer. Because everybody changed into digital camera, so the next tie-in question is. Ini balas dendam ya, karena saya ditanyai sekarang saya gantian nanya bapak ibu. 
what <laughs> what can we offer that technology cannot or to be on the safe side has not been able to offer pamiki what do you think pamiki i think the most important that teachers can do is the character building okay even the best robots cannot handle how to affect how to share affection to our student mm -hmm. to give to give uh, emotional feedback uh i'm disagree with mas himawan i'm sorry i call him mas because he is my senior including mas munir also <laughs> how are you sir <laughs> okay well uh, once again i'm not worrying i'm not a bit worried about all the robot things about replacing teachers mm -hmm. however humans are even greater comparing to robots because we handle humans not robot handle humans according to mr munir that only human can <laughs> educate humans not robot because we handle so many complicated things emotionally mm -hmm. intellectually and whatsoever that is why i'm sure teacher is not replaceable thank you mr vijaya thank you hey, uh, once again, once again, mr. Vijaya. Okay, Because, okay. Uh, okay. This is becoming a very interesting conversation. More interesting than my topic, actually. <laughs> yeah. When we use LMS or what's whatsoever technology mm. can offer us, it's only tools for us, actually. True. Very true. Because when you use Google, I'm use I'm using, for example, for teaching, I'm using Office Tika Nambima. They can only support us. They can only help us. The main point that we can appreciate our student that how small or how big they improve. So they are the the, the, the learning process. That's all I think. Thank you, Mr. Vijay. Okay, thank you, uh, Pak Miki. Uh, this is a very interesting, uh, this has been a very interesting conversation. It is a, it's so great to be able to share with uh, Bapak Ibu. It turns out it's already 12.57. I would like to return the helm to uh, the organizing committee, Burahayu. Yes, uh, thank you, Pak Wijaya. Um, there are so many comments in the chat box if you have time to look at them. Uh, and, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the comment mostly approved that we need teachers uh, more than technology. True. Technology is to help, uh, not to replace. I think that the... the suitable words. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Pak Wijaya, thank you so much for your time. Um, I think we are coming to the end of the session. You are most uh, welcome, Ibu. Yeah, uh, your presentation is um, very advantageous and we are enjoying your, your material. Um, so let me uh, remind audience to fill in the exit ticket before leaving the session and to get the certificate out oh, one more for from Dwi Rahayu robot no feeling <laughs> so yeah. he cannot solve <laughs> he cannot solve emotional problem <laughs> okay. okay thank you okay. <laughs> thank you so much uh, Pak Wijaya for your time for your um, presentation for your present uh, we hope that we can meet again in another Uh, time. Sorry, but the link permission cannot be open. Oh, Still yes. Good. Yes, Ibu, uh, we will fix that. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the audience. Uh, we are not going to end the session until you have done completed the, um, the link. Um, thank you. Um, and we will hope that uh, you have a great time with us. I did. I did. It's been very great. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing today, Mr. Wijaya. You're welcome. Yes, Thank you. Ma. Yeah, I hope uh, everyone can fill in the ticket. So um, while waiting for everyone to fill in the ticket, I think uh, you are welcome to have a chat over the session, if you don't mind, Pak Wijaya. I don't mind at all. Not the slightest bit. Because, yes, Bapak Ibu. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, it's a very good meeting, especially in this uh, pandemic where it's hard to meet my friends. And now I have so many new friends. Yes, uh, Papa Igo. Maybe, yes, go ahead. Uh, maybe we can, uh, you you can share your phone number. Maybe we can discuss something. Maybe if you don't mind, I mean, because... Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting to have a discussion with you, sir. Okay, uh, I, I don't mind at all if it's okay with uh, the organizing committee. Excuse me. Yes. When will the next webinar be held? Because I live join it again for another topic thank you uh okay i cannot see the speaker well i would like uh Rita to return it the question to the organizing committee uh because maybe the organizing committee can uh answer the question and yes. uh that's yes, my phone number oh okay um Bapak Ibu, the audience, please kindly fill in the exit the form bit.ly slash exit ticket underscore BP22-1 and the certificate will be sent to your email within seven working days. Um, anything I can assist you, Pak Wijaya? Oh, well, or Pak Miki asked for... For now, oh, it's see. already okay, in the yeah. chat box. And there has been a question about when will be the next webinar. Well, that will depend on the organizing committee. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. It's not up to me. To I will Pak, Wijaya, uh, Pak Wijaya will be re-invited again <laughs> in, the, in, in three years' time. Yeah, Pak Wijaya. Please thank be ready. <laughs> okay, Bapak Ibu, thank you so much for your um, active participant. Thank you, Pak Wijaya, for your material. Uh, I think I will end the session now. Thank you so much. See you Thank again. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Stay healthy. Bye, all. Bye, all. Thank you. Yeah, don't forget to uh, fill in the exit ticket. bit.ly slash exit ticket underscore BP22-1. Pak Wijaya, you may leave the screen. Thank you very much, Ibu Rahayu and uh, friends in UNESA. Oh. Goodbye. Excuse me, the link cannot open. Still need permission. Yeah. yeah. Nobody is responding. Yeah, the the link bitly slash exit ticket underscore bp twenty two press one cannot open. Hopefully to share the link again, maybe. Yeah, the link research. should be should be blue color, but it is black color, so we cannot open the link. Uh, maybe you can just copy and paste it in Google, Google, sir. In Google, sir. Yeah. In and only Google. right click it. Just copy and paste it in Google. Try it. I have already done it. Have you tried it? Yes, I have done it. Okay, wait a moment. Just copy and paste it in Google browser. It mm -hmm. Okay, I will try it. Oh, thank you for the information, Mr. Munir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the committee. Mas Munir, thank you, Mas Munir. See you soon in the campus. Thank you, Mas Vicky. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, like like ya. Okay, thank you, sir. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam.
Wait, wait, wait. I can't. Oh, can I open also? Ya, masih ada yang kesulitan, Bapak Ibu, dengan pengisian Bitly? Yeah. Ya, yeah, I try to copy and then I open in Google Form in Google, so yeah. we cannot open. So I cannot open. Oh, okay. Oh, I can open. Pak Komang, Bu Tini, bagaimana? Yes. Bu Antari, sudah bisa diisi? Yes, I can. Oh, okay, ya. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I can. Yeah, I think we have your name. Sepertinya kami sudah ada informasi nama ya Pak Komang. Nanti lewat email aja. Yeah. Oke, okay, I will check in email ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, thank you. Uh, Pak Munir. Okay, okay, okay. I already. Okay. Oh ya, yeah. thank you. Okay. Bu Tini, okay. Bu Anani, Bu Titi. Oh, yeah. Tidak ada masalah? No, 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 no. Yeah, every time fine. I, I, it just, no problem. Oke. Okay. I'm hoping that Mr. Vijaya can share the material. The material. Oh, oke. Okay. <laughs> um, we we will try to manage uh, sending the material through your email. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Burahayu. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Pak Munir, may yeah. we end the screen? Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you. At gmail .com. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I think I have finished with